Hey, it's Russ from Pro Tools Expert, and I got another email about another track. Uh, Nicki Minaj, I Am Your Leader. There's the synth part that somebody said, how is that done in that track? Well, again, never sure how they've done it in their track, but I'm going to show you how you can do it in Pro Tools with just the stuff that comes from Factory. And in particular, I think what uh, the email was from Basil Farrington, and he said, how is that synth sound created? Well, let me play you it first. And the first thing is, what's really cool is it's a repetitive thing. It's like a hi-hat pattern, really. It's just da 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 Let me play it to you. So as you can see, it's just all, if I open it up in MIDI editor by double clicking it, you see it's just notes playing all the same, all the same time. And then we have this pitch shift thing going on in, in a while. First, let's talk about getting the actual sound before we even talk about the pitchiness of the sound and how that pitchiness is created or how I've created it in this version of it. And what's nice as well is if we just, uh, I've got it down here, but I, of course I can't play it as normal. Uh, we've got these, uh, I've got boom playing with it and then I've, I've just taken a break beat and chopped it a bit just to kind of give it that end sense. Uh, that's in the original track. So let's look at the sound. We're going to use Vacuum, uh, the mono synth that comes with Pro Tools, uh, that one looks like an old Russian synthesizer with all the dirt and stuff. Uh, you would have thought they would have cleaned it before they shipped it from factory. But anyway, there we go. It's got, still got the tape and the dust on it and stuff like that. And we're going for a triangle wave. You could try a sawtooth if you wanted to as well, but we're going for a, a triangle wave. So you want to pull this down here. And then we've got both the high pass and the low pass filter working. And so the original sound, if I just come up here and play it. We've got, uh, so we've got uh, some of the, what we're doing with the, the, the low pass filter just pulls down the top end, makes it duller. They've got some res in there as well. That gives it some character, some resonance. And then at the same time, we've got the high pass filter and that's allowing the highs to come through. If you push that up, as you can see, making it much thinner by doing that. Of course, if you go beyond the point where this is, you end up with no sound. So it's quite a thin sound. Then we have some attack on it. Not too much, just a little bit. Just take some of the front end off. Then some decay and, and just a little bit of decay. There. Then I've got vintage filter on it as ever. Now, that's just giving me some extra sort of character in it. Now, you don't have to use that if you want. In fact, if I take it out, it's hardly making any difference. But I just think it sort of gives it a bit more character to the sound. Then we've got ensemble, which is like a chorus. Let's take that out. Just giving us some width. And I might pull that, pull the width in a bit there. And I pulled the rate right down to about 0.28 hertz. So I've got it on factory default and just set it like that. And they've got air reverb because the sound also is in a room. So getting that room sound, I've gone for the drum room and then I've pulled the mix right down to about 24%. So there we are. That's the sound, how we get the actual sound. So vacuum and then ensemble and then reverb. Now the interesting thing is how do we get that pitchiness at the end here? Now I've just, it would probably take me an hour or so to figure out the actual points at which this should be set to give the exact uh, pitch changes that you actually hear in the original track. Let me show you how I've done it though, because I've actually used some automation as I often have to do to create these kind of tricks. And what we're doing is we are making sure that the mod here is set to pitch there and it's set to envelope one there. This needs to be decay into the middle there, sustain in the middle and rest of them as they are. And then what this...
As you see, that moves. Now, what we need to do is make sure that it actually then moves in time. So, do the the I, I often tell you how to do it the long way. I'm going to show you the short way, which is you press down Control Alt and Command on your keyboard, and then you click on any part of the plugin, and it'll say Enable Automation for that part. And I've already done that, so you see it's a little green light now. So, Control Alt and Command, and then click on it and it will say enable, that's already enabled, so it's going to say disable instead. So then we come here onto the timeline and we drop down this and you want to make sure that you're down and you want to come to the bottom of the list and the bottom of the list will be this mod one depth and we want that mod one depth to actually move, I'm just going to move it along so you can see both of them working. So if you look at that and you look at this at the same time, you'll see that as it goes around that bar this will automatically move because I've drawn it in using the pen. So that's how you get that pitchiness. And you can either do that using the pencil tool here and draw it in with the pencil tool, uh, or then you can then come in in the uh, smart tool and then you can move things around by using that. The smart tool will work. And it's just a case of end. Actually, that's slightly more like the track now. Let's try that. That's about it. So let's hear the whole track now. Go back. And as I say, I've just put boom in that's just doing this. And it's sort of there's a beat like that as, it, as she starts to sing the first part. Then I've also got this drum part in here that's uh, me just taking a break beat and then just chopping it up a bit, which is just at the start of that track. So really, they never appear together. What you have is this, really. This is what you normally have. If I just take that out and double that by Command-D, duplicating it. Now, normally, the track would do this. So that's how it did. And it's just a case of you adjusting this until you get the pitchiness of the sound that you want to get and it sounds more like the track. Now again, some people write, why do you keep doing these videos that show you how to copy tracks? We're not doing it for that reason. They're being done so that you, so that people who ask us can see how these kind of tricks are done. So what we're doing, we're using the mod depth in vacuum to change pitch and that's how you get pitch effects in tracks. Uh, and then you can use this trick in other tracks. So I'm not guessing that most of you are going to go out and do Nicki Minaj tribute acts with these tracks that we talk about. They're just tricks of how you do this kind of stuff. If you want to know how I chopped up that beat, that's pretty straightforward. And if you, if you, it's another trick I'll show you while we're in this track actually, is if I get you this beat, and I'm just going to move this back in the track a sec. This beat originally was this. I'll just open it all back up again. This is the original beat that I had to play with. No, that's not anything like the track. So all I did then was I went through it and I just chopped it up and then created a new beat out of the, the existing beat just by chopping it. Just by chopping up the, the snares and the, and the kicks and stuff and you get that. The great thing about break beats is you can do that because they, they, they're, they're so kind of sort of uh, urban and not that realistic anyway in the first place that you can actually chop them and it doesn't really that often be that noticeable. So there we are. There's some tricks. That's how we got the sound. That's how we got the pitchiness. That's how we got the rhythms. Play you one more time. Hope it's been a help. If it hasn't been a help, then uh, and, and you just want to leave pissy comments, then just, uh, you're probably better off going to the Justin Bieber channel. Anyway, here's the track again, and I'll see you again soon. <laughs> So there we are, Basil Farrington, who asked me how you do it. That's my take on it using Pro Tools, nothing else. And I'll see you all again soon. Thanks for watching.